Hey friends, so welcome back to DVC Inc. Facebook Live Summer Learning Series. We are super excited that you decided to join us today. Um, if you are just tuning in, hopefully you are seeing us live. Uh, we would love for you to tell us who you are, what you do, where you're from, and maybe just something that's on your mind today. <laughs> it can be anything. <laughs> share, share with us what you're thinking. Um, we will we have a very special guest, as you can see. <laughs> I don't know who it could possibly be. Um, so we're really excited to have the captain on the show with us today. And yeah, you are in for a real treat. So Dave, please do talk about yourself. <laughs> yeah, hey, thank you so much for having me on the show. Um, I was about to say good morning to everyone, but I realize I may be one of the few people here who it is actually good morning. So good afternoon to most of you. Um, I'm on the big island of Hawaii today here with the fam. And so it's 10 a.m. our time. And so, uh, but good afternoon to all of you on the mainland. And uh, I'm excited to join Tara today. We I see are, some people popping in. Yeah, so we got Brian and Evan and Monica, Denise, Lisa, Lisa, our two Lisas in the house. Yeah, super excited. So we don't usually get Dave on the show and he is actually in Hawaii. So we're super excited that he took some time out of his day today. Hey, Emily. Hey, Evan. Hey, Laura. <coughs> to join us, be sure as you are joining in, say who you are, where you're from, um, what you're thinking. Um, it could be anything. We are going to every single comment during this live show will be entered to win a free book of your choice. So it's kind of cool when you get Dave or me as the guest or the host because you get to choose the book you want. Um, so please do load up the comments. We love it. Yeah, we got over a hundred choices for you today. So yeah. you, don't, you, don't, you don't have to be stuck with Teach Like a Pirate today. Or P is for Pirate. You can choose any. Got over a hundred choices. I know a lot of you already have that anyway. And so this will be your opportunity to get from the latest books like um, – Fight Song and Sail the Seven Seas, all the way back to the early books, anything you want in the uh, DBC line, it's yours if you're the winner today. Yeah, and we'll be sure and drop the link to our bookstore over there. Remember, in our bookstore, so it's daveburgessconsulting.com backslash books, um, in there, every single book, you can click it, except for the picture books, you can click it and you scroll down on that page and you can actually preview every single one of our books for free. So you can read the first few chapters for free to figure out which one you want. But you have to tell me sometime today because I'll go mail it tomorrow. <laughs> so that's pretty important if you're the winner. Um, Dave, so Dave is going to teach us something new today. And I think we're in for a real treat. I, I love that all of you guys are joining us. I see some people... I'm doubling videos here. <laughs> awesome. You are better and more talented than me. I can't even tweet and talk at the same time. It's just a disaster. <laughs> Got Jessica jumping in from Cypress, Texas. Thank you. I see Holly's here again. Emily, thank you. DBC Books, we love you too. <laughs> yes, we do. Laura. She's Hi, Angela. By the way, we'll be hosting T Lab tonight too. It's like, the Dave and Tara show all day today. <laughs> so if you want to later tonight, you should join us over on Twitter at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. We'll be hosting T Lab. It should be a fun time. We won't we tell don't you know what the we don't know what the topic is yet, but we'll yeah, be we there. I was gonna say we won't tell you the topic. It's a mystery even to us. <laughs> but it's gonna be epic, I promise you. Do I see an edu eye exam author on here? I I like Alicia's do. here. I do. One of my favorite sketch notes of all time. Monica's in the house. Yes, she is. Angela. Thank you, Angela. Thank you. D you know, Dave's book is one of my favorites, too. So if you don't have Teach Like a Pirate and you win today, you should totally choose that one. But if you already have it, we have a lot of books to choose from. So you're good to go. All right, Dave. So we are ready for some summer learning. It looks like our crew is primed up and ready. So teach us something. <laughs> hey, so what I thought I would do is talk to you a little about the Teach Like a Pirate five word GPS. And this is something that I do as a reflective exercise with educators as they're heading into their school years. So sometimes if I go around and do like an all day workshop, part of that workshop will be the Teach Like a Pirate five word GPS. It's actually based on something in Teach Like a Pirate where I have this section where 
and, and this was an exercise that I did personally too. I wrote a letter as if it was a student talking about what their experience was like being in my classroom. So a, a, a student writing what it was like to be in my classroom. And then my idea behind this was, is that this was gonna be sort of like my goal. This was my big picture. Like this is the kind of stuff that I want students to say about me and to write about me and their experience with my classroom. Okay, and so it's sort of this kind of setting this thing. Like here, here's the perfect, like. The, the perfect thing that I want students to be thinking about uh, their experience as they're joining me, right? Well, so not everybody wants to write a letter. So I've thought about some ways to kind of uh, kind of pare this down and make it easier to do in a live workshop. And so I'll share that with you right now. And so first let's talk about a GPS. If you buy a car and, you, and they ask you if you want to have the new GPS on the dashboard, you're like, yes, I've always wanted one of those GPS in my car. You get so excited. And so yes, put on the GPS, right? And so you have the GPS on your dashboard. And now you are so excited because now you can find anything, right? You can find anything with GPS. So you start driving. And after about 30 minutes, you still haven't found anything, right? You're getting a little frustrated. After about 45 minutes, you still haven't found a single thing. And now you're starting to get angry. About an hour into the drive, you pull back into the dealership and you say, like, rip this thing out, take it out. This doesn't work. Well, now that would be ridiculous. Of course it would be ridiculous because a GPS doesn't work unless you do what? You have to enter in a destination. If you don't enter in a destination, it's a pretty worthless little thing on your dashboard right there or on your phone, right? But not only must you enter a destination, but that GPS also must have another piece of information. It must be able to accurately determine where you are right at that moment and at every step along the way. Yeah, you have to be able to determine where you are right now. Without those two pieces of information, it's worthless. We've all been in a situation where our GPS is a little wonky and it can't track where we are and it's like doing all these weird things and, and, and the directions are useless, right? So you have to have those two things. Well, I think the same thing is true in teaching. You have to create a destination for where you wanna take your class, where you wanna take your students. Without that destination, you can never, you can never hope to achieve it, right? But not only that, not only must you create a destination for where you wanna take your class, where you wanna take your students, but you must, in a self-reflective and honest way, be able to determine exactly where you are right now with your students in relationship to that destination, just like a GPS. So here's the way that I recommend educators do this. And this actually comes from an activity that I saw Michael Matera do at the end of his school years a while back, right? He would have kids write down, last day of the school year, last assignment, he said, hey, write down five words to describe your time with me. You've been with me all year. Right now, I want you to choose five words to describe your time with me. And then he compiled all those student responses and he used a word cloud program like Tagzito or something like this, and he created a word cloud. And we know how that works. The more response time that, that word has been used by a student, the bigger in the word cloud that word is, right? And he, he printed it out and, 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 print, and made it nice and big and, and put it on the wall for the next year's class to come in, right, and see. now. So here's the assignment then. I want you to think about the end of your school year, coming up, the 2020, 2021 school year. What five words would you like to see huge in your word cloud? What five words would you love to see gigantic in your word cloud? And I have, I have teachers collaborate and connect and we could do this in the Facebook Live right now. Think of a word that you would love to see huge in your word cloud, a student response to, their, their, to describe their time with you. And maybe add a few of those in the comments, right? And so you'll start to see things, like teachers will say things like, well, empowering, um, life-changing, if we give them the hyphen, uh, maybe inspiring, maybe relevant. How, how many kids go through the school year thinking to themselves, when am I ever gonna use this? Right? No, so we want things to be relevant for them, right? Maybe real. Tara, you might like that one. I like that one. Um, yeah, <laughs> maybe real. Um, maybe fun. I would like to see fun huge in my word cloud, right? Um, and I put a priority on that, okay? And so you start to have teachers generating ideas. And um, hopefully, if you guys will put some ideas into the Facebook, oh, I see supportive. Yes. Caring, challenging. Yes. We, what powerful words, okay? Mm -hmm. Think about this. Imagine a kid goes through 180 days in your class. They only get to choose five words. And they choose a word like safe, 
maybe the only place in their life, but in your classroom they felt safe or supported or joy or family or whatever it might be. And so now let's dive deep into this. You choose your five words, you commit to them. You say, these are the kind of things I want kids to say about my class. And you set that as your GPS destination. But now the second part of the GPS kicks in. You have to be able to accurately determine where you are now. You look at that lesson that you have te- that you're gonna teach next. You look at your first unit. You look at that, what you have on tap for next week in your classroom and you say, hey, would any kid, would any kid who's going through what I have planned tomorrow or next week, would they write down these words? Would they write down inspiring and challenging and caring and supportive and, and relevant? Would they write those words up? Because if not, in a GPS, if you have a GPS, if you take a wrong turn, so it's like redirecting, redirecting or recalculating, recalculating, and it gives you directions to get back on track. So that's how you use this. You intentionally design the kind of lessons that will lead to you being able to live up to that five-word GPS and have students talking about your class like that at the end of the school year, okay? And so that's how you create the five-word GPS. Now, I've seen some cool stuff. I've seen teachers print this out. I've seen teachers put it on their door when kids walk in. They're five. I've seen them put it on a bulletin board behind them. I've seen them keep it on their uh, by their computer in their lesson plan, a guide, a kind of a planning book. They have like a little... Uh, a page that where they can have at the front of it where it has their five word GPS. So it's just, they're pulling together the lessons in their units. They have these five words to kind of go back to, right? And so this could be done as a staff, this could be done individually, but it's a great way to really kind of focus on a student-centered approach to teaching and thinking about, hey, how do I want students to experience my class? What do I want their feelings to be, okay? Uh, Maya Angelou has the famous quote about people forget what you say, they forget what you do, but people never forget how you make them feel. How do you make kids feel in your classroom? And so this is a way to do that. So uh, Tara, I'm gonna turn it over to you because I have not been watching these comments. You're killing it. Um, they are loading them up. They have so many fun five words. I mean, fun, motivating, challenging, inspiring, loved. They're so- Love those, Holly. I love that. I, I, there were so many inspiring words over there. You definitely have to check it out. Poor Dave, though. Like, if you're on the back end of our show, I know you. If you've joined us before, you know this. They actually can't respond via text, so they'll come back and respond later. That they can verbally respond. But you guys are killing it over here. And what a beautiful way to like just make it simple right i think sometimes synthesizing the big idea is kind of the key right it's just getting down to the heart of the matter and then using that as a filter for every single thing that we do in that classroom and making sure that we are providing the kids like what we want them to feel in our classroom and what a better way to do this if you're an administrator out there listening what a great um professional development at the beginning of the year it doesn't matter if you're on zoom it doesn't matter if you're face to face, this works. You know, this is, an, this is a way to get your staff thinking about how am I gonna serve the end users, my students, and make them feel what I hope they feel every time they join my class. If it's virtual or face to face, it doesn't matter. So I love that you guys are coming up with so many five word GPS. <laughs> I love exhil- Laura, exhilarating. Yeah, I love yeah. valued, wonderful. Like, so I, I'm loving all of these. By the way, this is so great to do in a collaborative space as well, because as you are looking at these words piling on the Facebook comments, you're probably thinking to yourself like, oh, oh yeah, like that's actually, I would like that one. I wanna make that a part of my five word GPS too. And so of course it can be done personally, but then when we share out and we start to connect and collaborate, then all of a sudden you're like, whoa, yeah, maybe that's even a better fit for me. I like that word that so-and-so said, my colleague said, and you start to grab that and you can start to combine uh, other people's words with your words and create something that's really very powerful and meaningful for you as well. Um, so you can do this as a staff. Um, you can also do this, like for example, let's say you're a principal and you want to not just do this with a staff, but you wanna do this for yourself. It could possibly be from the standpoint of how would I want my staff to, re- like if, if my teachers mm-hmm. had to write down five words to describe my leadership 
and their, their experience with being in a school that I'm leading, what five words would I like them to experience? You, of course, as a principal, could do it with students too. How to, what experience do I want students to have coming into my, uh, my building, into my system? But you could do it from an, an adult standpoint too, of what I want teachers to say. And if you're a district office person, maybe you support principals. If you're a superintendent, you could say this, you could do this for principals too. What do I want principals to, what five words do I want principals to use to describe my leadership style and the experience of working with me? So it could be done at all different levels. Um, and, uh, and it can be done so that your whole system can use this, um, a challenge like this. Totally. I think it can be done in all professions. I mean, it's the culture, right? You, you're trying to, de to describe what you want the culture to be like. And you, everything you do from that point forward, no matter how far you zoom out, everything that we do beneath that level, we need to make sure that we're running through that filter. Is it going to help our people feel? And not just one of those things. I think you should go through all of them. Like, is this lesson going to help my people feel all five things, right? And if not, how can I make it better? How can I bring it to life? How can I help to make this culture exactly what I was hoping it would be in every single thing that we do? And I think that's really important because sometimes I, I know that you know, we just get kind of haphazard. We're like, this was just going to be like eh, today and whatever. That's just kind of what the day is like. But no, I mean, I think we should hold ourselves to those high standards as well. And if we know this is the filter, we know this is the goal, this is the destination that we want to get to, you kind of don't want to take the long route, right? You don't want to get lost and then try to find your way back. It's a GPS and we kind of have need to have that mindset. What is the shortest distance to get there with no tolls, and <laughs> no money just like get right there you know and so i think we need to think about it like that every single thing that we do needs to be very intentional i think you're right tara and i think what you said is so key the idea of this doesn't even have to be education you know if you if you have a business what do you want people to experience when they they walk in your store what, what five words do you want uh customers to leave this interaction in our store with us with how we how we're set up as a physical environment all those kind of things and that and that's something that a school site could do too i wrote a blog about this recently or a while back now it was called a tale of two stores and it was actually based on something that happened to be here in hawaii where i walked into stores that were right next to each other right next to each other yet i had a much different experience and feeling coming out of each of the stores in one of the stores there was a thousand different signs that told me do not touch break you break it you buy it like all, all these I mean, every single display had all these signs basically making it seem like i was a threat to, to their business another story i walked in i was greeted and was treated in a much different fashion. And I'm always gonna go back to the second store. I'm always gonna go back, if I make a purchase, I'm gonna make it at the second store. I'm not gonna go to the place where I felt like uh, there was a, like a security cam follow, camera following me everywhere I went, right? And yeah. so we need to do that when we come into our school systems too, and think about like, what, what do people experience when they walk on our campus? What do, people see, what do people get from the signs and the signage that we have around our space? You know, what is, what is it that they're bringing in and learning about us through that? And so um, there's lots of different ways to look at this from both the teacher's perspective of your classroom, but also um, that leadership perspective of your, of your school system. What's on your, what's, you know, what, what, when people drive by your school and they see your big billboard and sign outside, uh, what is, what is that, what kind of reaction does that, um, does that generate, right? Is it positive? Is it uplifting? Is it inspiring? Does it make you think like, oh, wow, this is this looks like a place where I want to send my kids? Or is it more something that uh, that kind of like turns you off when you pass by it, by when you read what it says? And so I think these are all things that we can be considering and thinking about. Totally. It kind of reminds me too, I hate to like keep this going forever, but one of the things I'm thinking about, so we're talking about what we want them to feel, but I think sometimes we kind of need to know where we start, just like in a GPS, you put in your destination, but then you always put in your current location, right? And I think it's important maybe that we survey the students or we survey the end user, the staff, the customer, whomever it is, and see what it is that they're feeling right now. Because it could be that we think that we are arriving at that end destination, but maybe we weren't sure where we started. And I think I think we need to make sure that we understand that. If kids aren't feeling safe in our classroom, or if they're not feeling valued, or if they're not feeling loved, or all of these different words that you guys put over there, 
We need to know that. We need to know our current reality, our current location, so we can get to that destination. We, we've, cre- we've kind of created something like this for our books as well. And this is something mm-hmm. that we work with our authors with very closely. And we say, hey, here are seven things that we look for in our books. And so, and like the first of them, I'll tell you, is energizing. We look for your projects that energize and get people fired up about this profession, get people excited to do this work. You know, like a principal knows, if you put one of our books in the hands of your teachers, they're going to be more excited to get back in the system on Monday than when they left on Friday. Right. And so a lot of books we feel miss this mark. You know, they're written like an instructional manual for a DVD player or something. Like I can't even make it through the first chapter of something. Right. But like we want books to get you fired up about education and teaching and whatever it is that you do in the school system. And so we've kind of created in a sense a GPS, in this case, a seven word GPS for for our books. And so this could be used at just so many different levels. And I hope that if you don't do it uh, collaboratively with the staff heading into this next school year, that you personally will take the time to come up with your five word GPS. I would love for you to share it with us uh, as you spend some time and think about it. And um, then, and if you share it out, then that has a whole professional network of, of uh, accountability partners too. Yeah. And, and so we would love to see what your five word GPS is for the coming school year. And thank you so much for joining us today. Tara, thank you so much for having me on as well. Hey, I heard that there's some sort of special Zoom book study coming up for one of our books. What do we got going on? I mean, I heard that too. It's pretty impressive. The author herself is hosting the book study. So if you would like to hang out with Kim Bearden, I mean, who wouldn't want to hang out with Kim Bearden? I actually got to hang out with her in real life. It's like the best experience ever. So she is going to be hosting a Zoom book study. It's invited to the whole, the whole world is invited. So um, I think she can only hold a thousand people in her Zoom. So you should sign up today. It's absolutely free. And let me get the... Um, let me get the link up here. I saved it so I can put it right up here. But it's it's a bit.ly link. So there's a Google form. You just have to put your first and last name and your email address. And that's basically it. And she gives the three dates of the book study. So it's like July 16th, 23rd, and 30th. And they're all going to be held at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You get to talk to the author. She'll be designing the questions. And you get to ask questions. She's going to facilitate it in a way that you can comment over in the comments. And... I mean, if you want to know something about a book, ask the author, right? I mean, that's the best, that's the best possible thing you could do. And the very cool thing about Fight Song is this is not just for teachers, not for principals, not for this book is for everybody. Yeah. This is about this is a very authentic, very real, right, story mm-hmm. of Kim and overcoming obstacles and how you can live with more passion, power, peace purpose. And so um, it, it doesn't even have to be an educator that you jo- that you join in with. If you have somebody in your life that you think would benefit from this message and it's super powerful, have them join the Zoom book study. We'd love to have them. Yeah. And please do tag your friends. You can take this image, tag your friends. It's over on our Facebook page as well. Um, yeah, you should totally join in. I think it's going to be amazing. It's the first time we've ever had an author do a Zoom book study like this, right? I think, I think it's, it's the first one live on a Zoom, but yeah. For us. I mean, we're learning like with Zoom, you can do all kinds of things. <laughs> and so, yeah, it was her idea. She was like, hey, I think I want to do like a live book study with all my PLN peeps. I'm like, nobody's going to complain about that. I mean, I want to be there. I haven't signed up just to leave space for you guys. But if we get down to the end and there's some room, I want to jump in. <laughs> you too. So awesome. Dave, thank you so much for teaching us. Um, you have lots of love over here. They're saying you just really fired them up and they just, yeah, they're looking really excited. Thanks for joining us, friends. Remember, every single one of these comments is entered to win a free book of your choice. We will put the link over in the comments, but it is Dave Burgess Consulting dot com backslash books remember every single one of our books too you could preview them for free so if you're ever just looking and you're like i want a book to inspire me to do this um you can go and check out all of our books by category over on that book set on that book page and you can actually preview them for free and we have a ton of them that have book studies that already come with them so if you're an administrator and you're in the house and you're like i need something for my staff that already has questions with it you just go to daveburgessconsulting.com backslash 
book study activities page and everything you need is right there for you. So we are here to help you. If you have five word GPS for DVC Inc. that you would love to share with me and Dave, please put that in the comment. We will make sure that we try to help us reach that destination as well from your point of view. So Dave, anything else you wanna share with the crew before you leave? Thank you so much for joining us today. It's so inspiring to see so many of you hopping onto the Facebook Lives and listening to uh, what everyone is sharing. And so we really appreciate you. And Tara, of course, thank you so much for pulling this all together and hosting it every week. And um, the feedback has been fantastic. So this has been, I think, a really cool thing that you've added to what DBC offers. Awesome. Well, I have a lot of fun with it. Um, these guys know I feel like I'm hosting a show, so it's it's fine. <laughs> you are hosting a show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am. I mean, CBS might be calling me soon. I don't know. <laughs> but just kidding. Awesome. Well, bye, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Remember, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, same place, same time, different author. But we are super excited to have Dave on the show. And if you share your five Wear GPS, please do tag us, tag Dave. He would love to see them. And yeah, have a great afternoon, everyone. Bye.